evening, junior hockey fans, and welcome inside the NMAX Centrium in Red Deer. This building is the host of the 2016 Memorial Cup, but tonight it is the host of the two most exciting words in junior hockey, in fact, all of hockey, Game 7. I'm Rod Peterson, joined by Braden Melsbury. And Braden, here we are, a one-game showdown to get to the WHL's Eastern Conference Final. How surprised are you that we are back here in the very same setting as Friday night? but in a one-game winner-take-all night. I'm not surprised at all. The home team in this series, as we know, has won every game, and you kind of got the feeling after Game 5, Rod, that we would be back here at the beautiful NMAX Centrium for Game 7. The Pats storming out to a, a big win there in Regina at the Brent Center, and they'll look to carry the momentum over here tonight in a place, as we all know, they have struggled in in this series, 0-3. Well, it's been a homer series, so let's Let's talk about that, what the Rebels need to do or the Pats need to do to win here tonight and maybe change the fortunes. Well, I think if you're the Regina Pats, you got to come out here. You have to get a quick start. We all know it's going to be loud and wild here tonight at the NMAX Centrum. So I think if the Pats can get a goal or two early and really suck the energy and the life out of this building, it can only mean good things for this uh, Regina Pats club. And if you're the Red Deer Rebels, you want to get the fans into it early. Maybe a big goal, maybe a big hit, perhaps a fight. Something to get the fans on their feet and hopefully they can use that momentum to jolt them out to a victory here tonight. One last point, and it's a big one. The pressure is on the Red Deer Rebels. The Pats aren't even supposed to be here. They weren't supposed to be playing this long. The Rebels are the Cup host. They're supposed to be the best team, at least on this side, Braden, and they know that. Absolutely. I had an opportunity to chat with Carlisle, Saskatchewan's Hayden Fleury, the defenseman for the Red Deer Rebels, and it didn't seem like he really wanted to admit it, Rod, when I asked him, but he did say... You know, the pressure is all on us, and it's win or go home, although, of course, they are hosting the Memorial Cup. They would see some more action later this spring, but all the pressure on the Red Deer Rebels here tonight, so we'll see if they can come out to a big start and get things going early. That's Braden Melsbury. I'm Rod Peterson. Pats and Rebels coming up next in Game 7. live from Central Alberta where we set a heat record today 27 degrees Celsius in Red Deer but it's even hotter inside in a larger crowd than the one which showed up for game five on Friday night 6185 this facility holds just over 7,000 fans since its renovation four years ago and they're hoping this is not the last Rebels game before the 2016 Memorial Cup. You're getting a look at Ryland Toth who gets the nod in goal for the Red Deer Rebels tonight. He is one and two in these playoffs with a 2.84 goals against average and a save percentage of 9-11. The Saskatoon product, 19 years of age, started his first game of the playoffs in Friday night's game five and backstopped the Rebels to a victory but struggled in Sunday's game six and he, they're hoping will be able to ride his back into the Eastern Conference Finals. Let's go down to ice level for the singing of the Canadian National Anthem. True patriot love and all thy sons command with glowing hearts we see thee rise the true north strong and free from far and wide Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee.
And with that, we are ready for Game 7 play-by-play -play from the NMAX Centrum. We already had a look at Ryland Toth, the starting goaltender for the Red Deer Rebels. Let's have a look at the other end at Tyler Brown, who started every game in the playoffs for the Regina Pats, the 18-year-old Winnipegger. 7-4 in the postseason with a 2.7 goals against average and a save percentage of 9-15 and a pair of shutouts. Talk to some NHL scouts in attendance here tonight. While not rated for the upcoming NHL draft this summer, they have their eye on Tyler Brown because he's been simply spectacular for the Regina Pats here in these 2016 WHL playoffs. The Pats in their road Navy uniforms tonight. The Rebels in their home whites defending the end down to our right here in the opening period. Luke Philp, the captain of the Red Deer Rebels out of Canmore, Alberta, who's got 10 points in these playoffs, will face off against Adam Brooks to get this hockey game underway. The referees are Chris Critch and Brett Iverson, the linesman Scott Sharon, and Cody Hughesby. And Braden, you certainly feel a real nervous tension in here in the building, I think, from both sides. You can uh, cut the tension with a knife. There's no doubt about it. And the fans already went into it. And my God, they were into it in warm-up. And a, a Pats fan bus making the trip. So the Pats will have some support here tonight from their fans who made the trek down the road. Adam Brooks, the face-off win to lift the lid on Game 7. The puck's been worked all the way down into the Rebel zone. Right-hand corner, Austin Wagner shipping it behind the Red Deer net. Wagner, the Calgary product, plays it out to the line. Chase Harrison holds it in and shovels it deep. Down to get it. The captain, Luke Philp, does a turn to avoid the four-checking Wagner. And it's cleared out to center ice. Back on the Rebels line now for Hayden Fleury. The first-round pick of the Carolina Hurricanes advanced it. Now got it back. And now we have play halted. Something that went on in neutral ice. And the faceoff being brought back down all the way into the Regina zone. And it looks like, Rod, we are going to have our first penalty of the game going to the Regina Pass, Sean Richards. So the Red Deer Rebels of power play will go to work. They're ranked at third in the Western Hockey League playoffs at 25.6%. Just 37 seconds into game seven. The Rebels find themselves on the power play. And off the draw in the Regina zone, Hayden Fleury holds it in left point, right side to Adam Haluka, and he'll shoot from there. It's blocked, jumps into the Regina slot, and Cole Sanford darts away. The 20-year-old from Vernon, B.C., clears it into the Red Deer zone, goes after it, collides with Fleury, and Haluka now will walk away with it, but he's checked at center, and Sanford turns it the other way. Long shot high and wide of the Rebels' goal, and it comes down in the left-hand corner. Hayden Fleury over to get it. From Carlisle, Saskatchewan, up the wing to Haluka, and the Rebels are away. Filt now down the right wing side into the Regina zone. Tops it off for Michael Spachik to Filt behind the Regina goal. 115 to go in this Red Deer power play as James Hilson Dogger now picks it up in the corner, and the veteran Pat of Lloyd Minster wires it all the way down the ice, and the Rebels retreat to pick it up, and here's Fleury gliding out of his zone. Upwards to Brandon Hagel, but he can't get control at the Regina blue line. There's a battle for it here, and now Sergei Zabrowski will drill it all the way down the ice, and again, the Rebels have to retreat to set up on their power play here. Again, 3-0-2 into game one. Hayden Fleury scored a power play goal for the Rebels, and they never looked back. Here, they haven't been able to get set up just yet. Now it rolls free into the Regina zone, and at the left point, it's Josh Mahura. Leaving it left side to Hagel, back to Mahura, down the right wing side, and Bobby Glitz free with one, and it's kicked out by Brown, and hammered all the way down the ice on this penalty kill here. 22 seconds left in the penalty to Regina's Sean Richards. Cleared into the pad zone. It's in the left-hand corner where Colby Williams rocks with his man. Evan Poli comes to the line. And Bobic runs the post for that one. Stick side on Tyler Brown, who was not set. Didn't see it coming. And got a little help from the post. And thankfully for Tyler Brown and the Regina Pats, a heavy shot off the back end, and it will hit the bar. And as you mentioned, Brown not quite set, and it was a too many men on the ice penalty to the Regina Pats being served by Sean Richards. Just eight seconds left in the penalty. 
Sam Steele against the Rebels Braden Pertil off the draw and the puck comes out of the zone Mahura handles it out at center one of a handful of Red Deer products on this Rebels team as Sean Richards now joins the play and the Rebels are indeed 0 for 1 on the power play tonight Mahura handling it along his own line up through center and Grayson Polinchuk can't handle the pass Sam Steele now starting in he got tripped up and the puck slides down into the Regina Pat zone scoreless here almost three minutes off the clock in game seven of the second round WHL playoff series Connor Hobbs now skating through center and the former medicine at Tiger dumps it in he got cranked just as he did from Paul and Chuck stays in the rebel zone and it's steel down in the left corner for Sean Richards does a tight turn to avoid Michael spot check who eventually Topples them over. It comes up on the right wing boards. And the Rebels haggle now will stick handle into the Regina zone and stop on the wall. Darts right into the middle. A low shot. And Brown got a piece of it as it comes up the left wing boards. And Peluca possesses it for the Rebels. To the line to Flurry. And just shovel it in deep. Hagel and Chase Harrison tied up in the corner. And now it's right side of the Regina zone for Haluka. Adam Brooks watching him comes to the line and depths on the long wrist shot well wide comes up on the near wall of the Regina zone it's chopped deep by Hagel Haluka now with some room at the side of the net turns and fires high and wide and it screams out of the corner down the ice and the Rebels will have to retreat as each team gets a change just over four minutes gone in game seven. Pats and Rebels are scoreless as Kale Detzel, the Rosetown Saskatchewan product, tried to pass it across to Flurry and they couldn't get it out. Back in it comes and Toast sets it up in the corner for Flurry. And he's going to play a ton tonight as he clears it out to center ice. Wagner with a steal and he'll ship it high off the glass and in as the Pats get another change up front. Flurry deep in the Red Deer zone. Long feed to center. Connects with Paul and Chuck and the Rebels are in. Now it's DeBrusque on the left side. Kicked out by Brown from the butterfly. Connor Hobbs on the rebound. Skates up the right wing. Slithers it ahead to Jake Lecician. The son of longtime NHLer Curtis Lecician. Knocks it deep into the Red Deer zone. It's in the left corner. And now fed up on the wall for the captain, Phil. Pestered by the Regina Pats, Jared McCammon, who scored a big goal in Sunday's Game 6 win. It comes on the right wing now for Luke Philp, and the Conmore product will shovel it up. It's tipped into the Regina zone, and DeBrusque is on it right corner. He'll knock it around the net. First one there is Chase Harrison. For Regina, and he'll backhand it out to center ice. Mahura there, nifty stick work through traffic, eventually he's checked, and then gets it back on his own line. Josh Mahura, long feed over for Austin Pratt in the Lakeville, Minnesota product, will clear it into the Regina zone. Colby Williams back in the corner. The one-time captain of the Regina Pats stop, bringing it out from behind his net, a shot off the wing, blockered behind by Tyler Brown. And now it's picked up by Pertil for the Rebels in the left corner of the Pat zone. On the end boards, and Chase Harrison blocked it for the Pats. Knights it up on the right wing. Luke Smith trying to get a hold of it. 17-year-old Pat runs into Pertil, comes toward the line, and Smith eventually allowed to kick it just out to center. Six minutes into game seven. Still no score, and the Pats haven't had a shot on goal yet. Left-hand corner of the Regina zone. Poli over skates it. Cole Sanford knocks it out, and now it's a break for Richards. Down the right side with speed, and he knocked it just wide of the cage, and Ryland Toth might have got a piece of it. And it is chipped out, and now it's brought through center by Adam Musa. And offside to his left wing was Evan Poli negating the rush. Quite the sequence of events here at the NMAX Center, and we'll take a look at the two-on-one for the Pats. Richard walks in, is able to hang on, get a shot on it, but a save by Rylan Tilt as he comes up with a big one. His first of the save here, first save of the game here at the NMAX Center. Yep, indeed a shot on goal credited to the Pats there, and it came at the 623 mark of the opening period. Cameron Hughes, by the way, the CHL super fan, is in the house. And that's uh, one of the reasons why you hear the Red Deer faithful so into the game as if they needed it. But what an atmosphere here tonight. As the faceoff will be in neutral ice, Adam Brooks against Luke Philp on the draw. Brooks, Wagner, and Zablocki for Regina for the Rebels. Philp, Paul and Chuck, and Jake DeBrusque. 
And on the faceoff, the Rebels get it. Phil in his own zone for Hayden Fleury, who's got NHL written all over him, takes it down in behind the net and's content to wait there. Now fed across ice to Detz, a long lead feed off a skate into the Regina zone. Connor Hobbs throws it up the boards, interrupted by Felt. Left for Paul and Chuck on the wall, and he ripped it into legs. Anner, uh, Adam Brooks now up the wall for Zablocki. Lead feed missed him, and the pass will be called for icing when will not be allowed to change. The faceoff will come in their zone. The Regina Pats, a missed opportunity on that last sequence. Austin Wagner would have been off to the races for the Regina Pats, but unfortunately for him, he could not pick up the hot pass and a faceoff deep inside the Regina zone. I would suggest there are some nerves here on each side. That's been evident. Just over seven minutes into this opening frame, still scoreless. Adam Brooks against Brandon Hagel on the faceoff, and Regina claims it. Let's, the uh, Pat Silsendagger overskates it behind, but now it's brought ahead by Lane Zablocki. The long lead feed tipped in, and the Pats will get a change as they match things up here. It's skated through center by the Red Deer Rebels. Nelson Noje drilled into the Regina zone. Colby Williams back forward in the near corner. Sixth round pick of the Washington Capitals. Can't clear. And now Hagel drilled a long rolling wrist shot from the high slot, and Tyler Brown had no problems with that. No traffic in front of the goaltender, Tyler Brown. Uh, another shot from the perimeter from the Red Rebels. This time it was Hagel, and Tyler Brown has done a, done a, a splendid job here tonight, but the Red Deer Rebels will need to get more traffic out front if they want to beat the Winnipeg Manitoba product, who's been great for the early stages. Now it's Sam Steele against Adam Musil in the Regina zone, and Sanford knocked it straight to the line. It was held in briefly. Now Sam Steele jumps on it, springs Sanford in, but he cannot beat Josh Mahara, who made a great defensive play to block Steele, their projected first rounder in this summer's NHL draft. And he rips him to the ice along the boards in the Red Deer zone as the pucks battled for it down and behind the Rebels' cage. Sam Steele in there, but it is the Rebels' Mahura that'll bring it away. And the six foot three rear guard will work it to center. Poli keeps it moving down into the Regina zone. And now a icing call will bring a rare face off in the Red Deer zone because there hasn't been a lot of action there tonight. You are absolutely correct in that assessment. The Red Deer Rebels out shooting the Regina Pats. Five to one here tonight. I think if you're the Regina Pats uh, head coach and GM John Paddock, you want to see your club winning a little more, a few more battles rather in the Red Deer zone as Red Deer has been very strong on the puck here tonight. Grayson Polinchuk racing up ice, flipping it around Sergei Zabrowski, and it comes deep into the Regina Pat zone and another battle for it down in the left corner. Deprust pride at three, comes to the line, and Flurry will put it right on goal, and Tyler Brown's not going to take any chances as he covers up. And again, there's the nerves of Sergei Zabrowski. He could have pinched at the Red Deer line. Instead, he let Polinchuk bring it 200 feet. And Tyler Brown just going to cover up, uh, try and alleviate some of the pressure here from the Red Deer Rebels as the Pats have had a few decent chances, but it's really been all Red Deer here tonight. So we'll see if the Pats can weather the storm. That's exactly what they're hoping to do as Musil wins this draw of Jake Lassishan, and it's pounded in deep by Austin Strand behind the Regina goal. Now left corner, Adam Musil has it. Walked up the wall, turned it back to the corner, put it on goal. Brown got a piece of it. Rebound now. It's right in front. Bobic couldn't get it on net. Now he'll try again from the left point, and he pounds it wide. Side of the goal now. And again, they can't get it on the four by six as it's brought out by Riker Cole. Down the right wing side, he'll put it on net, and Toth will calmly blocker it to the corner. And Austin Strand has time to get it at the side of the Red Deer net. Calgary product, product rolls it left corner. Bobic now a hard pass through center. Poli can't pick it up. Jumping at the Regina Pats line. Jeff DeWitt now sent it in, but not far. Hilson Dogger the long feed the other way off the skate of Jared McCammon down deep into the Red Deer zone. And one more time, and icing on the Regina Pats will bring a face off in their zone. 
And the Red Deer Rebels doing a great job here tonight. They're just throwing everything they can on the net of Tyler Brown looking for a rebound and they're sniffing around, going to the dirty areas here tonight and they're not afraid to, to score perhaps a garbage goal because hey, they all count and the Red Deer Rebels uh, facing elimination here tonight along with the Regina Bats in game seven. Yeah, first time the Rebels have faced elimination in these playoffs. Second time for Regina. We'll see who flinches here tonight and punches their ticket to Brandon for the Eastern Final. Jared McCammon now down the left wing side, a long low shot in. Toth had more trouble with it than he should have. And he'll cover up for a faceoff in his zone. It appeared Rylan Toth just getting a piece of the initial shot. It bounces off the end wall. And the Saskatoon product is forced to cover up at the side of his net. As he did not want to take any chances as Luke Smith and Jared McCammon were sniffing around in the blue paint. Philp against Adam Brooks in the Red Deer zone. It comes in behind the net and now Paul and Chuck, the Ard Ross and Alberta product will just clear it out and get the heat off here. Although it was minimal from Regina here at this point of the opening period, halfway through, still scoreless. Maher with a little trouble in his own zone. Advances it now up to Kale Detzel. Long feet off the skate of Paul and Chuck all the way down the ice. Connor Brown out of his net, rolling it up the far side. It eludes Jake DeBrus, hammered back in behind by Detzel. The Rebels had to clear the zone. Connor Hobbs has it at the side of his own net. Fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals. Upwards, not a Wagner. Man, he can fly over the Red Deer line. And his long shot blockered into the corner by Toe. Comes up the wall and DeBrusk is on it. The first round pick of the Bruins rolls it ahead. They got a two on one. Built down the right side. Pass block. They still got it. And Brown will zero in on it in the blue paint and hold on. Great defensive effort by Sergei Zabrowski to keep it scoreless. Sergei Zabrowski in the right place at the right time gets his stick in the lane and breaks up the pass out front of the goaltender Tyler Brown another rush from the Red Deer Rebels as Polinchuk fed Luke Philp as he tried to feather it back to Polinchuk Philp a backhand on the net of Brown he doesn't bite and he'll hang on and yet another big stop from the Regina Pats goaltender early in this hockey game. Tyler Brown, who came to training camp with the Regina Pats in the fall of 2015, was released and sent back to Winnipeg when they recalled him two months later. John Paddock said he didn't even remember him in training camp, and he wrestled away the starter's job from Daniel Waffle, and it is his job for the next couple of years. And you look at these Rebels, a lot of pressure on them, Braden. You got that sense from them. In fact, they said it this morning at the morning skate. They're the Memorial Cup hosts. Yeah, I was chatting with uh, Hayden Flores. We have a look at him here on our broadcast, the Carlisle, Saskatchewan product. He didn't really seem to want to admit that the pressure was on them, but he said, yeah, I guess you could say all the pressure on us here tonight in game seven as the Red Deer Rebels look to keep their playoff drive alive. You can bet they, they want to get to the Memorial Cup on their own terms. They are hosting it, but they do not just want to be there because they're the host team, but they have met a very good club in the Regina Pats in round number two, and they have given them quite the fight. There's a look at super fan Cameron Hughes getting the crowd worked up here. He's in from Eastern Canada as part of the Game 7 promotion. We're ready to go with a face-off in the Regina zone. Sam Steele against Michael Spacek. They met several times in game six on Sunday and came out pretty much even in the face-off ring. Let's see what they do here as Spacek wins it cleanly out to the line and Detzel, his wrist shot blocked. That's that Noje couldn't get it on net. And now it's picked up by Spacek. And the veteran out of the Czech Republic will just backhand it in. Zabrowski back. He fell in the corner. Hagel's got a step. Trying to break free of Steele. Walks around to the right circle. Gives to Spacek. And on his back is Chase Harrison. It's dumped down low and Haluka can't pick it up. Left corner comes in. Hagel given a rough ride by Sam Steele off of the puck. And now it's Zabrowski clearing it out to center ice. Nine minutes to go in the first scoreless as the Rebels now ice it. And the faceoff will come down to the Red Deer zone. And a big faceoff for the Regina Pats. Only four shots here tonight 
on the net of the goaltender Ryland Tothan. You can bet they want to get something going here as the Red Deer Rebels fans, they have been into it here right from the get-go. So we'll see if they can uh, turn the tide here, so to speak. Jake Lesishin winning the faceoff off Musel and the point shot from Hilsendegger kicked out by Tothan and he gets in front of the rebound as well from Riker Cole and that little sequence right there is the best and most sustained pressure the Pats have had in the game. One of their best opportunities of the contest and, and I'm sure that the Regina Pats will be looking to get a big rebound off the pads of Ryland Tilt. They had a lot of success at the Branch Center in game six with that strategy. Still scoreless, opening period of game seven. The puck is in the Red Deer zone in the slot. Colton Bobbick fed it up the middle. Dangerously, and it's turned over. Lesishin swats it deep. Bobbick peppers it off the glass, and now then Poli will advance it down into the Regina zone. Hilson Dagger golfed at it and missed. Picked up by DeWitt in the corner and sent it. It comes all the way to the line. Bobbick tees off. It hit Bonnie's in front. Bobbick gets it back. Put it to the goal and that hit Poli. Riker Cole now from behind the Regina net. Spilled into the cage as he sends it into the corner. Jeff DeWitt, another Red Deer product, plays it behind for Musil and he's bumped by Hilson Dagger, but he stays on the puck. Musil left corner. Will walk right out of there high with it and off the mask of Tyler Brown and Riker Cole clears it just out and then he catches up to it at center and the Musiman product will slip it in but not far Bobbick of the Rebels takes it away hands it over to Austin Strand who is forced down in behind his net and is checked off of it by the four checking Sam Steele boy has he been great in these playoffs and all three zones Sam Steele now comes to the line and just out Colton Croker will rip it back in for Regina as they clear the zone and Steele picks it up left boards. Down to the left corner of the Red Deer zone is Steele and he gave it up. Pertil fires it around the near side pinching from the point is Croker to hold it in there and he'll lob it behind the Red Deer net. Steele again in the back pocket of Strand but he can't center. Comes up the wall. Frederick or is that Croker battling it is Frederick battling for it on the point. He'll backhand it into the Red Deer slot, picked off by Strand, and flipped out to center ice. And from there, Tate and Ratty will deliver it into the Regina zone as the Rebels get a couple of changes. Jared Frederick in the left corner, up the wall for McCammon. He'll swat it out. And now it's the Rebels' turn to clear the zone. Jake LaBrus tipping in a long feed as the Rebels get more changes. Tyler Brown out of his net for Cobbs, for a Hobbs, a quick feed. He eludes Brooks and comes up ice. Hayden Flurry of the Rebels advanced it, but not in. Now here's a quick up, and DeBrus dances in, feeds Luke Philp in the right-hand corner. He gave it up to Hobbs, then gets it back. Whiffed on his centering pass. Now in the left-hand corner of the Regina zone, Brooks knocks it up the wing, and now Wagner's got a break. Austin Wagner down the right side. He didn't get much wood on it, the shot. Stopped by Tote, and he'll hold on. And a good opportunity here by the Regina Pats. Wagner walks in, wires a shot on the net. Of a goaltender, Ryland Tote, as the Red Deer Rebels looking a little bit tired on this sequence. But Ryland Tote, he makes a big stop for his club in the late stages of this opening frame. As it appears now, Rod, the Regina Pats, they have some light. They weathered it. And let's see if they can get the game's opening goal here as the puck is backhanded by Brandon Hagel down into the Regina pad zone and Sergei Zabrowski's on it first around his net onwards to Cole Sanford at center ice. The 20 year old 50 goal man got stood up at the line. As we talked about on the radio earlier today. I'd love to see them dump it in and try and use their speed. But for whatever reason they want to carry it in time after time after time and it's going to be certainly tough for the Regina Pats to do that here tonight and have any sort of a success when you have some big names big bodies rather on the back end like Hayden Flurry, Colton Bodvik and Kale Detzel just to name a few. Adam Brooks comes after the puck in his own zone and wins the race. Flipped it up the wall and tipped out and now Brooks catches up to the center he's one on two. Dashing in he's the WHL's leading score in the playoffs too, but he can't make a play on it And that's at the side of the Red Deer net jumped in toward the slot DeBrusque will pounce 
jumps on it and flip it out. Jumping on him at center. He had his head down. Oh, Nelly. Aaron Macklin could have knocked him into next week. Just got into his road. Connor Hobbs in the left corner of his zone. Up the wall for Macklin. Jumping on him. He can't get control. And Sablocki now the other way. Up for Macklin who will steer it in. And Hayden Fleury goes back for the Rebels behind his net. Backhanding it all the way up ice. Pats have to go back to get it under five minutes to go in the first period of game seven. Still scoreless. Here's a redirection by Macklin in on toe. Sets it up in the corner. And the first one after it is Riker Cole. It rolled away from him. It's in the skates of Macklin over there. Adam Musil poke it in as well. And now it squirts free behind the Red Deer net. And Cale Detzel's on it there. The assistant captain throws it right up the middle. It connects with Musil. Saucer passed in. And Cole lies on it first. Centering feed. Knocked away by Hilsendogger. Big rugged defenseman out of Lloyd Minster. And now Riker Cole will bring it ahead. Gain center and snap it in as the pass will change on the fly. Toe thought of his net for Noje. And up the wing to Jeff DeWitt. Out to center ice here now to Musil. Busting his way into the net goes Poli. The shot out of the corner screams through the low pass slot into the line. Dumped deep by Mahura and around the Regina goal. Chase Harrison picks it up on the wing. The 19-year-old from Winnipeg will blister it in around the Red Deer net and picked up by Hiluk in the corner. Quickly turns it the other way and the Rebels have a break. Right side feed to Hagel. He'll shoot through a screen and Tyler Brown very confidently and calmly gloves it for a whistle. And you're probably not going to beat Tyler Brown here tonight like that as the Red Deer Rebels again bust into the Regina Pass zone, but that does not fool the Winnipeg product as Musil strong on the puck, able to get a shot away on this last replay that we just showed you. Adam Brooks against the Rebels' Michael Spacek. And the Rebels claim this one. Detzel's point blast kicked straight ahead by Brown. It's high stick and blasted by Detzel just wide. Zablocki off the boards. Whipped on his pass. Second effort now is able to get it ahead through center. Detzel back sending it the other way. And now a stretch pass or lead feed. Trying to spring a two on one with Zarent looking for Haluka. Comes deep into the Regina zone. Adam Brooks on it. Up the wall for Zablocki. He'll zip at the center ice and then catches up to it there. He'll bat it into the Red Deer zone. Hayden Fleury back first to get it. Wires it around the left wing of his own zone. Blocked on the boards by Polinchuk and steered back in behind the Red Deer cage. Flurry up to the line and just out. Lobbed deep by Macklin as each team gets a change and Hayden Flurry has it behind his net, standing up right, huffing and puffing. Told you he'd play a lot. Now over to Detzel and he sends it all the way down. Tipped in, no icing. Tyler Brown out of his net to play it. Far corner for Zabrowski. Up the wall now for Jake Lesition. And the 16-year-old will hammer it in and then in turn get crunched by Polinchuk. Now we got a penalty upcoming as Aaron Macklin took down a Red Deer skater. And the Rebels will get their second power play. The hockey game late here in the first period. And it looks like it's Josh Mahura laboring in pain, and that is not good news for the Red Deer Rebels as head coach and general manager Brent Sutter has been really impressed with the play of Mahura as we see Macklin heading to the sin bin for two minutes for kneeing is the call. So the Red Deer Rebels, uh, another opportunity to go to work on the power play as we see Mahura going to the bench. And hopefully for the Red Deer Rebels, he's going to be okay. In game six on Sunday, the Rebels were 0 for 1 on the power play. They carry the third best man advantage in the WHL playoffs into tonight's game seven at 27.7%. Pat's penalty kill 15th, ranked at 73.5, and here we go. Face off to the left side of the Regina goal with Regina looking to keep the Rebels off the board on this second power play. Face off win by Steele, and it's fired all the way down by Sergei Zabrowski. 20-year-old from High River, Macklin in the box. 
for kneeing as you heard. Spacek on the Red Deer line slips it back in his own zone for Flurry. Long feed to Philp at center trying to duck around Sanford. Hands it off to Flurry and they take the zone but not for long. Zabrowski pumps it all the way down and Telt is out of his net to set it up for Flurry one more time. These shots 12 7 Red Deer in a scoreless opening period. Flurry scampering out of his zone. Drops it back to Haluka and they're in. Right side Spacek. He fired it wide. And Brooks will knife it out. Philp places it back inside his own line here for Hayden Flurry. Their power play breakout. DeBrusk streaking right in. And he left it in the Regina slot, allowing Austin Wagner to backhand it out. Whistled back in by Flurry. Connor Hobbs has time behind his cage here with 47 seconds left to go in this power play for the Red Deer Rebels. Pat's getting a wholesale change. Steele and Sanford out up front for the Rebels. Poli, Musil, and the puck carrier, Brandon Hagel. Morinville, Alberta's Brandon Hagel bringing it in down the left side, but he stood up on the boards by Zabrowski and Cole Sanford whistles it down. What a pickup Sanford has been from the Medicine Hat Tigers on the trade deadline. He's got an 11 game point streak on the goal, by the way, coming into the contest. Hagel over for Musil, Dipsy doodles in, takes it to the right boards, down to the corner, all the way around the net as the penalty's up. 18 seconds to go on the power play. Mirhur is in from the point. Rubbed out by Macklin in the corner. Now it comes free and the Pats have a break with only 10 seconds left. Sam Steele on the right side. Carting it over the Red Deer line out front for Sanford. And he can do nothing with it. He runs into the big defender, Hagel. And on the buzzer, that'll do it. And we're through 20 in game seven. Nothing decided. But a very entertaining first period. Yeah, I thought the Red Deer Rebels dictated the pace through the first 10 minutes or so, but the Regina Pats, they did a good job of weathering the storm. And they got some opportunities on the net to the goaltender, Rylan Toth, and both goalies uh, perfect here tonight. But Tyler Brown has come up with some big stops in the Regina Pats crease. Coming up in our first intermission broadcast from Red Deer, Merrick Sutter of the Red Deer Rebels, the co-chair of the 2016 Memorial Cup, will join us, the son of Brent Sutter. But on deck, Braden Malsbury chats with Pats forward Cole Sanford. That's next. Pats and Rebels scoreless in game seven through one. It's the WHL playoffs on Access 7 and Shaw. Before and after the game, Tony Roma's offers casual family dining. Tony Roma's, a family destination, legendary ribs, and famous for so much more. Join the conversation. Tweet at myaccess underscore CA. Like us on Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to find out what's new on Access 7. Join me, Cadmus Delorme, and my co-host, Aaron Goodpipe, for ResX, Access 7's newest show highlighting Indigenous stories, Sundays at 8.30, only on Access 7. This is WHL Playoff Hockey here on Access 7. Pleased to be joined now by Regina Pats forward Cole Sanford. And Cole, your club responding huge with a big victory in game number six at the Brand Center, a 5-1 to one win. Uh, what went right in that game for your club? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, obviously it was a bounce back game for us. Uh, you know, I think we we had a really good start and, um, you know, carried it out through 60 minutes and um, discipline was a huge factor. I think we only took one penalty late, late in the third. So anytime you have momentum and you keep it going like that, uh, you know, the team's playing well and uh, everyone was contributing. And how exciting was it to play in front of a, a wild crowd at the Brand Center? Do you feel like that led to your success? Your success? Yeah, um, obviously. Uh, with it being sold out uh, a couple days before, the guys were pretty excited. So uh, to get that extra boost uh, going to a do or, do or die game uh, definitely helped out. And you have now recorded uh, 16 points through 11 playoff games uh, this season in the Western Hockey League. What's been going right for yourself personally, Cole? 
Yeah. Um, you know, I think uh, we've played pretty good throughout playoffs, and obviously being the underdogs, uh, you know, throughout this run, um, you know, being a good, good Lethbridge team. Uh, you know, the team's playing well, uh, line mates are playing well, so anytime you get put in that situation, uh, you know, you're bound to be successful. Connor Hobbs, a goal and an assist, and, and a plus three rating in game number six at the Brent Center. What has he meant to this club uh, down the stretch? Yeah, um, obviously he's, he's a big part of our blue line back there, and um, you know he, he plays in every situation, and he does it all. I think uh, you know he'll drop the gloves. He's got a you know a really good shot, and, and he likes to play physical. So I think uh, you know he's definitely uh, you know a backbone to that decor we have back there, and um, you know he's just you know one of the the many reasons. Uh, you know why why we're you know in the situation tonight and your goaltender Tyler Brown has come up with some highlight reel saves throughout this series how important has he been to this team yeah um, you know I've learned a lot uh, you know watching him and, and seeing how he plays I think coming over halfway through I didn't know a lot about him obviously but um, you know now I do and uh, now I know why uh, you know this team was successful this year uh, before I got here and um, obviously Anytime you have a goal like that, uh, especially in the playoffs, uh, you know, you're confident that, you know, if you slip up one, one mistake that he's going to make the saves, and, and he has so far. And every uh, game that has been won in this series has come by the home team in their own barn. Uh, why has home ice been such a factor throughout this series, Cole? Uh, well, I think uh, just the crowds, uh, to the main thing. But um, in saying that, I think uh, we're excited for the opportunity tonight, and um, we're looking to break that streak. And how key will it be to get a quick start here and get the crowd out of it early at the NMAX Century? Yeah, I think that's huge. I think, uh, you know, guys are going to be nervous, but, uh, you know, it's just another game. And um, if we can come out strong like we did last putting period, the Rebels open with an early power play. Tyler Brown standing up tall after repeated chances by the Rebels. And then the pass broke out. Sean Richards, it took seven minutes before this, their first shot on goal of the hockey game. Ryland Toth with the kick save there. Adam Musil was a threat all period long for the Red Deer Rebels. There he went high on Tyler Brown and went off his mask. And another break here, Austin Wagner, the fastest player on the pass, maybe in the entire WHL. Didn't get the wood on it there, Braden, that he probably would have liked. But the pass certainly settled down as the period went on. And let's see what they can do in the second period here. Yeah, and I got the sense uh, from both clubs in that first period, Rod, there was a sense of panic of both clubs uh, they don't want to make any mistakes and, and let the puck in their own net because they, they are both facing elimination but I would expect things to open up a little bit more if it, but it would depend on who scores first if the Red Deer Rebels can get a goal and get the crowd behind them here at the NMAX Centrum maybe the floodgates will open but the Regina Pats have done a good job so far in mitigating the storm. Five aside to open up the second period here in game seven. Sergei Zabrowski whistled a long feed through the middle, which Jake DeBrusque steals and pokes down into the Regina zone. And there's a battle for it behind the cage. DeBrusque has it in his skates. Try to drop it off on the high slot, but Wagner steered it out. Poked back in by Flurry. And Chase Harrison from the side of the pass net throws it up for Zablocki. Now a long feed from Zabrowski will come down for icing. 32 seconds into period two. And not what the Regina Pats wanted to start this frame as they ice the bucket. And that will allow some Red Deer snipers on the ice to set things up deep in the Regina zone as both clubs still searching for their first goal of the game. The Adam Brooks unit still out there for Regina against the spot check trio for the Rebels. Off the face off the puck comes into the left hand corner. Spot check and Zabrowski tie up and now Zablocki ices it again. This another icing call on the Regina pass and again they won't be afforded another change. So this unit could get a, a little bit tired, but only 45 seconds into the second frame. But another chance for the Red Deer Rebels to get things going offensively, and they really poured it on in the first 10 minutes of this hockey game. Now Tyler Brown slides well out of his crease to get a whistle, and John Paddock taps the Sam Steele line on the shoulder, and away they come. Michael Spacek. The veteran from the Czech Republic, two goals, seven assists, nine points in these WHL playoffs. And he's been great in the face-off circle as he stands in against Sam Steele here 
in this scoreless hockey game, not even a minute into the second just yet. And three whistles so far, and the fans, though, still into it here at the NMAX Centrum as Spacek will be waved out. And Hagel wins this faceoff. The point shot from Mahura block. Now Noje leans into one, which Tyler Brown will hold on to. Pats might want to think about getting out of their zone soon, however. Yeah, four or so whistles here to start in the second period here uh, by the Regina Pats. A couple saves from Tyler Brown. Easy saves, though. And the Pats, a couple of icings, but they're going to need to turn it up here a notch if they want to have any success in this contest. On this draw, Spachik, the first one on it behind the Regina net. To the line to Mahura. Right side, Noje pounds it wide to the right of the net. Hobbs over skates it along the boards. And now they dig away in the skates of Spachek, and it's pried out by Steele, and the Pats have a break here. Sean Richards now on the left side. Waiting, rink wide for Steele, but Hagel had him tied up well. Jumping puck, and Steele gets on it in that right-hand corner of the Red Deer zone. Twisting and turning behind for Cole Sanford, and he can't pick up the pass. Up the wing it comes, toward the line, Kobe Williams. Backhands it down and toward the corner for Richards. Behind for Steele. In front, Sanford. Shot it into legs, gets it right back. For Richards, it goes high and off the shoulder of Toth. It goes, Sam Steele on the rebound in the right corner. Up the wall, Haluka gets it free, and the 20-year-old Rebel will flip it out. Hobbs the shoot in as each team gets a change almost two minutes gone in the second still scoreless in game seven Sergei Zabrowski one hands it into the Red Deer zone but not far poked out by Mahura and now Connor Hobbs will claim it for the Regina pass and rolls it high to center it got through Mahura here's a break for Riker Cole shot from the right blocker save made by Toth rebound to the left wing boards into Witt Steers it out, upwards for Adam Musel. Wide right on Hilsendager, who forces him behind the net, but he stays on the puck. Musel all the way out to the line and lays it on the boards for Bobbick. Colton Bobbick, the long shot. Brown got a stick on it. Jumping puck to the line, held in by Strand. Good work in doing so. Down into the corner it comes, where Musel and Hilsendager collide. And Evan Polize in there, too. Zabrowski is the one who digs it out. The third round pick of the New York Rangers got it ahead to Sean Richards. Or is that Macklin sends it all the way down? And another icing call on the Regina Pats here. Faceoff will come into their zone. And the Regina Pats a little bit on their heels to start the second period as they ice it once again. But some good puck presence by Adam Musil of the Red Deer Rebels on that last sequence. And it seems like tonight he's doing whatever he wants. He can carry it around and really wind it up for this Regina Pats club, or the Red Deer Rebels club in the Regina Pats zone, excuse me. Brandon Pertil against Lasician on the draw in the Regina zone, and the Pats come up with it. Zabrowski, the long feed, finds Jake Lasician at center. He'll backhand it in, and Regina will get a wholesale change as John Paddock tries to match things up here. Flurry, the high feed off the leg of Austin Pratt at the Regina line, and now Chase Harrison takes it away. Feed up the middle, blocked by Pratt, and it trickles into the Red Deer zone. Flurry over for Pratt, up now to Pertil, and he gave it up at the Regina line. Luke Smith back to Pat Sophomore, cleared it to center, and then gives it up. And Pertil a long shot off the left wing board. He'll hold on, and Braden, you made a comment in the intermission when we weren't on air, but I think you were right. They're just too afraid to make a mistake. Both sides here in game seven. Yeah, it seems like uh, the Red Deer Rebels very apprehensive in the Regina Pats zone when it comes to passing. And to start the second period, the Regina Pats icing it multiple times. And I don't think either team really wants to give up anything in this contest. But you would have to think that uh, both of these clubs are going to be dialing it up a notch. As it's still scoreless here in the second. Longer it goes scoreless. Better off for the Pats, I feel. Here's a break. Austin Wagner is it alone. And he stopped by Tell. Stick side. What a beautifully developing play. Wagner just couldn't quite put it home. 
And play goes on. The puck is along the near boards in the red deer end. Polinchuk kicks it back to the captain, Luke Filper, returns it to Polinchuk. He now ices it. And the faceoff will be in the red deer zone. And Polinchuk looking for a pass on the right side to DeBrus, but they were not able to convert. But it would take a, a second look at this play. A breakaway by Austin Wagner and Ryland Till just getting a piece of it with the blocker, enough to keep it out of the Red Deer net and keep this game scoreless. See, but there's the path with their speed where they can exploit the Rebels. They just haven't used it enough here tonight. But it remains scoreless, just over four minutes gone in period two as Brandon Hegel pops it down into the Regina zone. Zabrowski throws it blindly up the left side, blocked by Spachik and left behind. Zabrowski on it first, couldn't clear. Now big Zabrowski from behind his net, poked it to the line. Blocked there by Mahura, can't get it to the net, but it's in the slot, Spachik back door, tipped just wide. Hagel now, back to the line to Mahura for Hagel. Flushes it down behind the net, and the first one there is Hulsendagger of Regina up to Sean Richards, but he can't clear. Tapped deep by Hagel again, and here's Hulsendagger out from behind his net. Swatting at it twice. Finally, it comes out. And jumped on at center by Sean Richards. He'll carry it in down the left side. Richards behind the back feet in front. Nobody was home. Spachik of the Rebels behind or through the legs pass for Haluka who will ship it in from center, the Burnaby's BBC product, and take a seat on the bench now. Now it's brought in front. Musil, fanned on it. Played to the line, and Strand ripped one. Save made by Brown. Rebound is right in the slot in a high-stick puck call by the officials. The fans don't like it. The Pats get a much-needed break, and the faceoff will come outside the Regina line. And the Regina Pats running around a little bit in their own zone. And we see the replay. Musil once again sniffing around in the blue paint. Unfortunately for him and the Red Deer Rebels, they cannot beat the goaltender, Tyler Brown, who stands his ground once again here tonight at the NMAX Centrium. Still looking for the game's first goal in game seven of the second round WHL series. Pats haven't been to a game seven since 2000 when they lost to the Blades in round one. Rebels are 3-0 and in game sevens, coincidentally, on home ice. Austin Wagner for Regina on his own line, rink-wide feed for Lane Zablocki. And the West Pasquin product dumps it into the Red Deer zone. Hayden Fleury on it in the corner will send it all the way down, and Red Deer will be called for icing here. And the faceoff, another rare one in the Red Deer end, will be to the left side of Ryland Toad. A lot of the play in this game, of course, has been in the Regina Pats end. And on that last sequence, Lane Zablocki's stick was actually tied up in the Zamboni gate as we see an official try and pull it out behind the net of the goaltender, Ryland Toth. It did not look like for a moment the officials knew there was a stick behind the net of Toth. So Zablocki not able to do much as he had to go to the bench and sit for a few shifts. Jake Lecician tossed out. Riker Cole will come in against the Rebels captain, Luke Philp. And on the draw, Hayden Fleury gets on it first, rolls it up the wall, and it's tipped out. And Chase Harrison goes back to get it for Regina. And as he cleared it out, the Rebels walked back in offside. What a slow-moving second period here. Yeah, not a lot of a pace to this a second stanza. Still scoreless, a lot of icings, a few offsides, and no real flow to this second period. So we'll see if that will change shoot here in the latter stages of this frame. Position against Musil, and the Pats get it. Harrison across for Colby Williams. And he didn't quite get to center, but he did get a shot in on goal, and Toth kicks it up out of play. I mean, one thing about Friday night's Rebels 5-1 win, the Pats weren't great, but there were a lot of odd man rushes and end-to-end, -end, you know, breaks. We haven't seen many tonight. No, with the exception of a, of a, of a few from the Regina Pats, uh, the breakaway from a Wagner uh, comes to mind, but 
Other than that, uh, the Regina Pats have not really tested the goaltender Ryland Tilt here tonight as he's only had to come up with 11 saves, a few of them from the perimeter, of course. 17-11 are the shots for Red Deer here as we get close to the midway point of game seven. Tied up on the skates along the wall of Riker Cole and Aaron Macklin in there too. And for the Red Deer Rebels, Colton Bogbeck digging away. Finally, it's Musil who pries it out. Scored here in Friday's game five win for the Rebels. He'll dance his way to center ice. Advances it for DeWitt. He can't pick up the pass. And Connor Hobbs backhands it out. Pounded in from center by Bobbick right on goal. Brown sets it up at the side for Connor Hobbs as the Rebels make a couple of defensive changes here. Connor Hobbs starting to rush out. Head up to center. Plays it onwards. Tipped in. And it's Sanford can't hold his own. Or is that Riker Cole? Either way, the pass getting a change on the fly as Connor Hobbs flips it in one more time. Mahura behind his net. Crunched by Luke Smith. Jared McCammon now for Regina digging away in there. It's Musil that comes up with the puck. Floats it up the middle dangerously. Adam Brooks steals. Takes it to the right circle. Drops to Zabrowski. And his shot hits a leg. Now it's Noje winding it up the other way. Leading this charge. Nelson Noje a shot from the right. Brown the save. And really no rebound to speak of. As he'll cover up for a faceoff in the Regina zone. Tyler Brown looking confident and calm between the pipes here tonight again for the Regina Pats as Noje rushed it into the Regina zone, walked off the wall, shot from the perimeter. Brown bobbles it a little bit, but he'll hang on and, and get a whistle for his club. Sam Steele against Michael Spachek to the left of the Regina goal. Steele wins it cleanly. And now we got a penalty up upcoming. It's going to be on Red Deer. As Cole Sanford pops it around his goal, Steele handles it in the corner, back in behind for Chase Harrison. This will be Regina's first power play of the night upcoming as they give it up a neutral ice touch by Spachek. It's an interference call. I'm guessing goaltender interference. Burnaby's Adam Haluka getting the gate. He did crunch Totter Brown into the cage, and Regina will go to the power play. And the fans with their exchanging uh, pleasantries here with the officials, but the official quick to call that one is Haluka clearly running into the goaltender, uh, Tyler Brown, and they're going to call that one every time. So the number one power play in the WHL playoffs will go to work here. It's for goaltender interference. Time to penalty, 17 Haluka goaltender interference at 17 And... John Paddock's crew working at a clip of 30.8%. As Cole Sanford streaks his way down into the Red Deer zone, got stopped along the boards, comes out toward Adam Brooks' right point, and he holds it in there. Now for Sam Steele. Back to the line for Hobbs. Sanford waiting left side, gets it back to Hobbs. Right side, Steele. Shot from there, ripped it high and wide. They got to get it on target as it comes out and Connor Hobbs handles it on the pass line. Onwards to Brooks. Throws on the brakes just inside the line and now Grayson Paul and Chuck steals it and feathers it down the ice here as the Rebels get a change to their penalty kill. This is the first Regina power play of the hockey game. Connor Hobbs upwards to Brooks and here they come. Left side to Lecician. He'll drill it in. Toth can't stop it. It goes around to the right Rebels corner. Hayden Fleury poked away at it. Couldn't clear. To Williams at the line. To Hobbs in the middle. The shot off the skate of Wagner and into the corner and Gardner lost the handle on it there and Hayden Fleury sends it all the way down the ice. Todder Brown out of the Regina net, leaving it in the corner for Williams, who's promptly tied up by Spotcheck. And Austin Wagner's down to get it. Fourth round pick of the LA Kings. Wagner hammering it in. Rattles around the end boards in the Red Deer zone. Left corner, Wagner rims it the other way, and nobody's at the point to get it. Chase Harrison over to get it now, but all the way back at his own line with 15 seconds to go in the Regina power play. They haven't had a shot. In they come, Williams. Back to Harrison at the line. Back for Colby Williams. Left side Harrison. The shot hit a leg. Didn't get to the goal. Now it did. They got credit for a shot there. Here's Lecician right corner. Poking it wide. Around to the left point it comes. Harrison down the boards for Riker Cole. Worked it out front off the goaler's stick. 
Now another penalty up coming to the Rebels. As Zabrowski's point shot comes down in behind the net, and as it does, we get the call. It's holding from in front of the net. Kale Detzel, and Regina goes back to the power play. So not what the Red Deer Rebels needed is the Regina pass a good opportunity at the tail end of their last power play. But Kale Detzel getting tied up out front of the slot with Aaron Macklin of the Regina Pats. So the Pats once again will go to work here on the man advantage. Well, if anything, that was uh, incidental, not intentional on behalf of Kale Detzel. But and the break of the media timeout here has given John Paddock and Dave Struish a moment to give their charges a little extra instruction here, although they look great to be using a more of a breather to me. Same story for the Rebels. Yeah, both of these two clubs looking gassed here in game number seven. Perhaps travel playing a factor. It's about eight hours, as we know, from Regina to Red Deer. And you touched on it earlier. Both of these clubs have spent probably 40 hours combined on the bus here in this playoff series. So you'd have to think that's starting to take its toll on these two clubs as they do battle here tonight in game seven in front of a wild crowd here at the NMAC Centrium. They're anticipating about 6,500 will be the announced attendance here tonight in game seven. And as I said, the longer this goes scoreless, the more it favors the Pats, in my opinion. And now they go to their second power play of the hockey game, and the faceoff will be to the right of Ryland Toth, the 19-year-old Rebels netminder out of Saskatoon. Sam Steele against Musil on the draw. And the Rebels win it, and Nelson Noje quickly rips it all the way down the ice. And Brooks will set it up for Connor Hobbs. Here's the penalty call. It is Cale Detzel for holding at the 18, sorry, the 10:32 mark. Here's Steele on it behind the Red Deer net. Right side for Sanford couldn't handle it. Flurry to the line and held in there. Adam Brooks has it left point. Swap sides with Connor Hobbs and feeds Hobbs the one timer and the glove save made by Toast. He picked it out of traffic. And a great shot by Connor Hobbs as he had his stick ready to go. Steps into a rocket. But a good read from the goaltender, Ryland Tope, as he had a few defenders out in front of him and a Regina, couple of Regina Pats forwards. And you can see the frustration level on the face of Connor Hobbs as he can't beat the Saskatoon product on the man advantage. No Jay can't clear. Brooks has it at the right point. For Connor Hobbs in the middle, left side to Cole Sanford. Lanes a block, he stands in front for the screen. Sanford's point shot off a leg, gets it back at the right point. Two pats in front. Connor Hobbs ripped one on goal. Pad save made by Toad, and the rebound. Hobbs can't hold it on side, and here's Polinchek with a step. He'll just work it down deep into the Regina zone. Adam Brooks back to get it. Upwards now for Sanford, and away they come. Into the zone on the right wing is Sanford. Hammers it around the goal. It comes near side for Harrison. 45 seconds to go in the power play. Brooks now moving right up. Right side, Sanford. It's the shot off the handle of Toast Stick. Up and out of play. Cole Sanford, the former Medicine Hat Tiger, with quite the shot, as we know, in the Western Hockey League. All sorts of time and space in the right face-off circle. A quick little snap shot, but uh, Tote just getting a piece of it enough to keep it out as the Pats search for their first goal of the game here. But now they're getting their chances, and they've closed the shot clock gap to 18-15. Still a half a minute to go in the power play. Colby Williams pounded one just wide of the Red Deer net, and it jumps off the corner boards all the way down, and Chase Harrison goes back to get it at the side of his net. Time for one more rush here. Upwards to Williams, and in they come. Flushes it down around the net. Toth gets a piece of it. To the left point, Harrison. Right side, Williams. Back to Harrison, and he'll let fly with it, and Toth sees it all the way in again with Austin Wagner standing right on the doorstep. And Ryland Toth has done a fantastic job here tonight of hanging on to the puck. 
He struggled a bit in game number six in Regina, but he looks dialed in tonight as Chase Harrison rips it on the net through traffic. But Toth comes up with another dandy of a stop. Tied up on the draw in the Red Deer zone, and now Spachuk steals it right off Riker Cole and darts up ice. Cuts across inside the zone, feeds Denso, and his shot blockered away by Tyler Brown, whom we haven't heard from in a while. High slot now, Noje into the right circle. Hagel put it right on target. Brown the save, and the rebound brought ahead by Riker Cole. Hand it over to Macklin. He'll pound it in. 20-year-old former PG Cougar. Now Bobic for the Rebels picks it up in the corner and he'll start the charge out to Spachik in the middle. On the left to Haluka and he's in and he's drawn a slashing penalty. And the Rebels will go to the power play. An ill-advised play there by Riker Cole. Strand has it right corner of the Regina zone, gives it right up to Macklin and we get the penalty call and the Rebels now will go to their third power play of the game. So will specialty teams play a factor as Riker Cole, no doubt about this one, a slash on the wrist of Adam Haluka, and Riker Cole will get the gate for the Regina Pats, and the Red Deer Rebels power play, the third-ranked power play in the Western Hockey League playoffs will go to work here in front of a loud crowd in Red Deer. Game seven. Winner moves on to face the Brandon Wheat Kings in the Eastern Conference Final beginning Friday in Westman. Regina Pats penalty number 22, Riker Cole. Two minutes for slashing, time to penalty 13-23. Cole slashing at 13-23. Okay, on the puck on the Red Deer line, Adam Musil hauls it up the middle and they're offside. They were a little too excited coming in. I'm telling you, and you've said it too. Both sides have displayed significant nerves here tonight. Yeah, it certainly showed through the early stages of the first period from the Regina Pats. But in this period, Rod, I would say it's the Red Deer Rebels. A little, a little bit nervous here at the NMAX Centrium. A little apprehensive, and they have not been making a too many crisp passes here in the second. So look for them to shore that up here. 135 to go in the Riker Cole slashing minor. Josh Mahura for the Rebels looks up ice, hands it off to Colton Bobbick. He'll pound it in around the Regina net. Chase Harrison golfed at it, couldn't clear. Sam Steele can't either. And Bobbick will swat it in behind the Regina net. Harrison rips it hard up and out of the zone. And Mahura's got to chase it down at his own end as the pass get a few changes here. Kaluka receives the long pass at center, and he'll skate in the 20-year-old. Weaves his way to the right circle, now drops it off to Fleury. Back to Haluka. The shot is wide off a toe. Brown did not see it incoming. Back right point, it's Haluka. As Philp stands in front, and here's the shot right off the heart of Totter Brown. Rebound held in by Spachik and poked down the wall. Sanford took a whack at it and couldn't clear. Philp on it now. The Canmore Alberta product to the right-hand Regina corner. Left side, DeBrusque up the boards for Spachek. Back to DeBrusque. Back door! They score! Peluca! And the Rebels strike first. Adam Haluka left all alone on the right side. No chance for Tyler Brown on that one as he had to go cross ice in his crease. So the Red Deer Rebels, they finally get the first goal of the game as Haluka ripped it upstairs past the sprawling Tyler Brown as the Rebels convert on the power play. Tough one to defend there. Spachik and DeBrusque will get the assist. Haluka's eight of the postseason. And Riker Cole, a tough one on him. He was in the penalty box. Uh, not a great penalty to take. And now the pass down one nothing here in game seven as the puck goes off a leg and out of play as we await the announcement on the goal. Yeah, all sorts of, of space as we touched on for Adam Haluka. And it took a while to get the first goal of this contest, but we see the Rebels score, and now the fans, they were a little bit quiet, 
but they're right back into it here tonight. Your Rebel goal scored by number 28, Adam Haluka. The assist number 19, Jake Debras. And number 23, Michael Spocek. Power play goal at 14.59. Haluka. So back to five aside in the puck in the Red Deer end. At the left point, Adam Brooks can't feather it deep. It comes out. Brooks back on it. The Winnipegger turning in his own or in the center ice circle. Back now for Colby Williams. He stops at center, leaves for Chase Harrison. Now some urgency for the Regina Pats as if they hadn't had any before. Down one nothing in game seven. Adam Musil on the red deer line into the middle for DeWitt. Upwards for Poli, and he's stick check coming into the Regina zone. The puck comes free in the corner. Hilson Dogger tied up behind the net by Musil. Zabrowski after it, and Brandon Hagel ties him up. Sam Steele got it free up the boards, but not out. Hagel on the right half wall. Now it squirts free to Sean Richards, and the rookie pat out of St. Albert. We'll work at the center. More Pats hail from Alberta, by the way, than any other province. Almost a home game for many of them. Colson Dogger. Oh, misplayed it in the corner, but Spacha couldn't walk to the front of the net. And Sanford will rip it off the boards to center. Now Noje in his own zone. Upwards to Hagel, who will redirect it in, and Hilson Dogger goes back to get it for Regina. Three minutes to go, second period now. The Rebels leading game seven, one nothing. Now it is Sanford, weaving his way to center, flipping it into the Red Deer zone, and he'll get it first in the corner, tying up with Mahura. Pops free in front, but it's Mahura who jumps on it. Right wing of center for Pert Hill. And now to Mahura who will backhand it in and Adam Brooks will take no chances and hold on for a whistle with 2.31 to go in the second period. And Rod, I would expect uh, the Regina Pats to take a few more chances here in the late stages of the second period and heading in to the third as it's a wild environment here at the NMAX Centrum. But the Regina Pats, they can't hang back too much. They'll have to get something going here offensively and do some more good things as they were doing on much of the first 10 minutes or so of the second frame. Riker Cole jams the puck out of his zone through center. Rolled back in though. Colby Williams trying to fight off Musil and does. Throws it behind his own net to Hobbs. He's run by Poli in the corner. And the puck comes to center. Colby Williams on it now. He's knee. I thought by DeWitt and neutral ice, the puck skips the other way, and Hobbs is back behind his net to pick it up. Up the wing for Cole, now to center to Macklin, now for Lasician. Darting in the 16-year-old makes a nice move and gets belted to the ice in front of the Red Deer net. Far corner, Detzel after it, colliding with Lasician. Comes up the wing and it's Philpu streaks away. The Red Deer captain burning wide on Zabrowski, takes it down behind the net and gets ridden out hard. And it's at the side of the Pats net now, and Brown via freezes it just enough for a whistle. The fans thought it was a quick whistle, but no matter, the faceoff will be in the Regina zone. Perhaps uh, the referee losing sight of the puck in the goal crease of the goaltender, Tyler Brown, as he wants to get a whistle for his club and alleviate some of the pressure from the Red Deer Rebels. And in the last few minutes, the ice has certainly been tilted in the Red Deer Rebels' favor. Adam Brooks against Phil here in the Regina zone. Puck comes down in toward the corner, and it's jumped on by Zabrowski, fed ahead for Wagner. Throws it in between the D, it'll trickle in on Ryland Toth, and he'll hold on. Wagner had the pass best chance earlier this period, a, pow a, a breakaway from the Rebels' blue line. Now he said if his hands catch up to his feet, he'll be very dangerous. He was robbed by Toth. Absolutely, Austin Wagner has been lights out for the Regina Pats in the Western Hockey League playoffs. Nine points in 11 games coming into this game seven. Dabrusk stood up hard by Hilsendager in neutral ice. 
Puck comes down, though, into the Regina zone right corner. It's felt. Rolls it through the low slot, goes clean across, and Zablocki plays it up to Brooks, and he's in. Adam Brooks wide left on the D shot from there. High and wide as we go to the final minute of the second. Hilson Dagger from the line, shot it into the gear of DeBrus who collides with Wagner on the near board. And Wagner toppled over by Dessel. The crowd loves it. Flurry now gets it free up the wing, and Paul and Chuck jams it off the boards and down. There will be no icing as Hilson Dagger goes back to get it here with half a minute to go in the second period. Brooks out at center. Back into his own zone to Colby Williams. Back to Adam Brooks. Across for Hilson Dagger. He can't receive the pass. And no Jay will poke it in. 20 seconds to go in the frame. Colby Williams now the other way, and here's a break. Zablocki for Brooks. He's in. He scores! Adam Brooks rifled it five hole on top, and they tied it with a dozen seconds to go in period two. Adam Brooks flying into the Red Deer Rebel zone. He sends a shot on the net of a goaltender, Rylan Toth, and I think that's a goal that Rylan Toth is going to want back. I think that the initial thought from Brooks was he was trying to get a big rebound, but he beats the goaltender, Rylan Toth, and we got ourselves a one-to-one -one hockey game late in the second period. The WHL's leading playoff scorer, Adam Brooks, nets his seventh. And it's 1-1 here with just seconds to go in this second period in the end. Max Centrium as it gets rough here on the final buzzer. Musial into it. And the Pats, Cole Sanford. As the officials clear the bodies out of the fray, I'm not sure if we're going to get the announcement on the goal. And that's fine. We know this. It's Adam Brooks, seventh of the postseason. It came at 1948. And the Pats have new life. Tied 1-1 going to the third in Game 7. Coming up in our second intermission of this Game 7 broadcast on Access, we'll be joined by the president of the Regina Pats Hockey Club and former Pats and Wheat Kings goaltender Todd Lombard. But first, our color man Braden Malsbury chats with Rebels assistant Captain Hayden Flurry. That's coming up after the break. 1-1 through 40 minutes in Game 7. This is Western Hockey League playoff action on Access 7. Tony Romans, serving its to the third period here at the NMAX Centrium Game 7, all tied up. 1-1, Rod Peterson with Braden Malsbury, and let's have a look at the highlights here. No scoring through the opening period of Game 7 into period two we go, and on the power play, Adam Hiluka converting a feed from Jake DeBrusk. Very tough for Pats goaltender Tyler Brown to defend for Hiluka, his eighth of the WHL playoffs, but with only a dozen seconds to go in the period, Adam Brooks races in, nets his seventh of the postseason, rifling it between the wickets of Ryland Toth, and it's 1-1 as you see the Pats fans. Jason Drummond down in the corner applauding it. 1-1 we stand, and Lane Zablocki and Colby Williams picking up the assists on that goal. Braden Malsbury, so 20 miles. 20 hard miles left to decide who wins this series. I can think of nothing better. It is exciting, no doubt about it. And I really think that the ice is tilting uh, towards the Regina Pats' favor right now. As you mentioned, they scored with a dozen seconds left in that second period. And you never want to give up a goal in the very late stages of a frame. So I'd expect a fast and furious start from the Regina Pats here to start this third. Five skaters aside, and as Braden talks about momentum maybe going Regina's way, they outshot the Rebels 11-10 in that second period. Regina 
trailing in that department, however, through 40 minutes, 22-18, as we're underway in the third period. And that's a little uh, loosey-goosey in their own zone. Wagner almost got caught up giving it away, but the puck slithers all the way down into the Red Deer zone. And from the right wing boards, Luke Filt, their captain, got it out. Sent back in by Lane Zablocki, the veteran out of Wittas, one who came over from Prince George in a summer trade. Got it in, but not for long. Goes off for a change. Connor Hobbs now up through neutral ice to Adam Brooks. Saucer pass to Zablocki. Long low shot tip. The rebound there and tied up well at the side of the net was Sean Richards as the Rebels now try to clear their zone. The long shot from Polinchuk blocked, and now Coke will cover up on a long shoot-in. Our first whistle comes 47 seconds into the frame. Toth just getting a, a whistle for his club here as the Regina Pats look to pull ahead. This game still tied up at one and uh, every faceoff will be critical for the rest of this third period and maybe overtime if we need it. Faceoff win by Steele. Connor Hobbs the long shot blockered into the corner by Toth and Sean Richards after the rebound behind for Sam Steele who's at a point a game clip here in the playoffs. Again, the 29th rated Amer North American skater for this summer's NHL draft. Comes out to the line. Hobbs backhands it deep and steals on it behind the net. Right circle for Sanford who whiffed on it. Up the wall it comes. Oh, it's turned over. Richards darts right in and a great defensive effort by Spachuk to poke it away, allowing Adam Haluka to stick Handel out with it. Up for Hagel and they're in and a very tight offside call. Haluka gets whistled down. The crowd certainly doesn't like it. The call from linesman Scott Sharon. It'll be a neutral zone faceoff. And not uh, really too much debate from the Red Deer Rebels after the offside call is we'll take a second look at it and it did appear the Rebels just a shade offside so faceoff just outside the Regina zone. Musil wins the faceoff off Jake Lasician and Poli will stare it into the Regina zone. Zabrowski back behind his own net tied up in the corner now by Adam Musil. You went in to help out Lasician as well, and it's Zabrowski who brings it away. Sergei Zabrowski floating it in toward Toth, and the Rebels goaltender will cover up and hold on. Interesting when we talk about Jake Lasician, number 19 for the Pats. He came over in a deal from these Red Deer Rebels last year that saw Connor Gay come to Central Alberta. Connor Gay ended up with the Saskatoon Blades this year. And Lasician starring with the Regina Pats centering that third line. Wouldn't that have been something for Lasician to be on this host Memorial Cup team? But things are working out very well for him here in Regina. Adam Brooks on the puck in the center ice faceoff circle cleared it in, but not far. The Rebels Hayden Flurry, who we haven't seen a lot of in the third, bounced it ahead, but not out. Wagner steers and couldn't get a shot on goal. Left corner, Brooks. Tips it to the line. Hilsendegger fishes it ahead to the high red deer slot. Backhanded out by Phil. And then Chase Harrison will hammer it back in for Regina, who tied up the shot clock. 22-22. And they're feeling it here in the third. Brooks to the line. Hobbs the drive. Kicked out. Rebound off the chest of Toth from the Adam Brooks shot. Hobbs holds it into the point. Got drilled by Polinchuk. Zaplowski spins and fires. And Toth got a piece of that one. It's in the left-hand corner of the Red Deer zone. Brooks for Wagner right corner. Up the wall for Hobbs. Waits. There's traffic. Connor Hobbs. Now the low shot. Blocked. Brooks tied up at the side of the net. And then Wagner had it sail through his skates down into the corner. Detzel throws it around left corner of the Red Deer zone. And it's golfed to the line by Sanford over the stick of Harrison and all the way down, affording Red Deer a change as Connor Hobbs has it behind his net. Fifth round pick of the Washington Capitals onwards for Sean Richards. He's belted, but the puck skips into the Red Deer zone. Poli from behind his net. Onwards to Musil, and he's away in this 1-1 tie. Down the left wing, stood up by Colby Williams. Sean Richards has broken his stick going after the puck in the corner. And Sanford gets the free puck and will backhand it into his own bench for a stoppage in play. Coming up on the four-minute mark of the third. 
And I think the Regina Pats have uh, done a lot of good things in this third period as we'll take a look at an good, another good save from the goaltender Rylan Toth as he has uh, been busy here through the second half of this contest. Pats out shooting the Rebels in this third period, 3-0. On this draw, Lasician pulls it back off Haluka. In the corner, Spachek's got it tied up in skates. Haluka in there too. And for the Pats, Sergei Zabrowski comes free up the boards, and Riker Cole is away with it. The veteran on a stopped at the Red Deer line, and Colby Williams brings it back into the Regina zone. One of two Regina-born players on this Pats team. Williams starts up, and he stopped at his own line. He can't carry it far against Red Deer. One day the Pats will learn. Sent in from center, Spachek. Deep in his own zone for the Rebels. Over to Bobic, up the wall to Haluka. Played it into the middle. Zablocki blocked it. Hilson dagger, though, the long shot in. Toth stabs it out of the air and sets it up. Comes up the wall for Polinchuk. It's turned over. But Phil, their captain, steals and has a head of steam up ice for Polinchuk. And he stopped. Great toe of Brown. And the Pats race up the other way. The Speedy Wagner's in for Zablocki. And he played it behind Adam Brooks. Now it's opening up. Here is Phil Pin down the right wing, but he's stopped by the back, checking Adam Brooks, and Wagner's there to get it. The King's prospect up to Zablocki, and he's away. Lane Zablocki wide right on Flurry. Throws on the brakes in the corner. Feeds Zabrowski, and he pounds it just wide. Left point, Harrison. Got it down the wall, but not far. And Pertil, or Zabrusk, sorry, will poke it up ice as the Rebels change, and Zabrowski will bring it out from behind his net. Veteran Pat from Moscow, Russia, tried to find Brooks at center, and the Rebels muddled that up. Brooks swatted at it and missed. Just inside the Red Deer line, and now deep as Nelson Noje goes after it. Collides with Sanford on the end boards. Coming up on six minutes gone in the third period of game seven. Tied 1-1 one, one in the NMAX Centrium in Red Deer, Alberta. Right point, Zabrowski, the shot on target, kicked into the corner by Toth. And now the Rebels, Poli brings it ahead. He walked around Zabrowski all the way down to the left corner of that Regina zone, gives up to Musil, and he's checked cleanly by Sanford and steals away for Stanford. Or Sanford, they're over the line. Steele down the right wing wall, trying to outmuscle Mahurl on the boards, and he can't. And it's taken away by the Rebels, Musil. And left behind the Red Deer goal as the Pats are afforded a change. Macklin, Cole, and Lasician fly over the boards. Dale Detzel from Rosetown, Sask, out of his own zone. Now they're offside coming into the Regina end, and that'll be blown down. And finally, a whistle after a few minutes of back and forth action here at the NMAX Centrum, sort of resembling a pond hockey here tonight in Red Deer as we get a second look on a good opportunity generated by Luke Philp as he threw it out in the slot for Polinchuk, but he could not beat the goaltender, Tyler Brown. Colton Bobic pops it into the Regina zone. Hilson Dogger back to get it in the corner. Battling against Brandon Hagel, the product of Morinville, Alberta. Comes free to Spachek. Tried to center. It's tipped away and out. Off the stick of Regina's Lasician. And the officials have come together to see if that puck went off the glass or not from here. Braden, I'm not sure. Maybe we'll get a replay, but the officials don't have the benefit of that. You know, they'll have to have a discussion here to sort things out at the NMAX Centrum. Uh, a long discussion taking place now here between the officials. They're gathered deep in the Regina zone, and we'll see if we can uh, get a second look at, and determine what exactly the call is, and it will be a, a face-off to the out to outside route. So there will be no penalty and uh, the officials coming to tell Brent Sutter that they have deemed the puck went out of play off a deflection. So the a Rebels deflection, I might add. 
And off the face off at the Regina line, Philp wins it. But they can't penetrate the Regina line, and Zablocki feathers it the other way. Wagner down after it. Calgary product down behind the Red Deer net for Brooks. Nice move to avoid Philp to the line. Harris in the lone shot. Toth kicks it out. Philp on the rebound. Up the wall, and it's deflected down the ice by Jake Debrusk. Colin Chuck. Cut off by Zabrowski at the pass. Coming into the Regina zone. Zabrowski played it to the line. Right to Detzel. And his long low shot just wide. From the left wing wall, Paul and Chuck. Now for DeBrus. Up front, Phil. Pounded it over the Regina net. Oh, boy. The Pats fell asleep at the switch there. Now it's fired behind the net by Detzel as each team gets a change. Harrison bringing it out of his own zone. Game seven's tied. 1-1. Harrison on the shoot in. Sanford picks it up. Right wall shot from there. Saved by Toth. And Sanford certainly had the right idea, but he didn't fool Toth. Sanford not afraid to pull the trigger from the right half wall. Looks like Ryland Toth bobbled it a little bit as we'll take another glance on the replay. A good read by Sanford just to wire it on the net of Toth as Steele was busting into the crease area. Face-off win this time by Musil. And Cale Detzel's long pass is tipped out of play. The face-off, that's Noje's pass. It'll come down into the Red Deer zone. And I've been uh, really impressed uh, by the play of uh, Nelson Noje through this Western Hockey League series. He's physical. He can join the rush, as we saw earlier on in this hockey game. He's a guy who can do it all. The shots don't look now. 10-1 Regina in this third period. And Hobbs now make it 11-1. His point shot steered aside by Ryland Toth, the veteran Rebels puck stopper. Now here's Richards in front. And he's robbed. Back to the line it comes. Hobbs for Colby Williams to Hobbs. The shot tipped wide by Regina's Cole Sanford. Boy, are the Pats buzzing now. It's in the right circle. Sanford took a dive and fell as it's poked out by Evan Coli. Rebels trying to get a change as Sam Steele swats it in. Toth will block it behind and leave it for Detzel as John Paddock double shifting his top two lines here at this point with his team sniffing an edge in play. 1-1 one, one here is Spachiko. Receives a long pass, but he's stopped by Zabrowski coming in. And Adam Brooks races back into his zone to get it and leaves it in the far corner for Sergei Zabrowski. The big Russian upwards to Austin Wagner, poking it into the Red Zero zone, and Hayden Fleury's back to cut it off. But he gave it up. Brooks on the wall. Can't cut to the front of the net. Comes to the near circle of the Red Deer end. Haluka on it there. Flipping it high. High stick by Brooks, and that'll be blown down. And they're going to leave the faceoff at the Red Deer line. Yeah, another whistle. I've been a really impressed, Rod, in this third period by the Regina Pats forecheck. And they've been fighting for loose pucks in the corners along the walls. And we'll see if that can translate into some more success here as we're still tied up at one. Here's that break and Sergei Zabrowski back to knock it off the stick of Michael Spachek. Boy, are things opening up here at this juncture of the third period in a tight 1-1 tie in game seven. Colby Williams walks in down the right wing side of that Red Deer zone and got stopped on the boards. Long shot by Sanford is tipped. Wobbles in on Ryland Toth and he'll cover up. He will and Sean Richards going hard to the crease area. I really liked his game here tonight. He's not afraid to go to those dirty areas and get himself a dirty goal as he has uh, been very good here tonight for this uh, Regina Pats club as they look to get contributions up and down their lineup. Lecession against Pert Hill to the left of the Red Deer goal. The Pats win the draw. Nelson Noje threw it up the boards, cut off by the pinching Connor Hobbs and backhanded down beyond the Rebels goal, but not for long. Mahur is up with it, backhands it in, and they'll be called for icing. Boy, just a little thing that the Rebels Mahura doesn't pay attention to, brings about a face-off in their zone. 
Yes, and the Red Deer Rebels will have to be doing uh, some harder thinking in their own zone as the Regina Pats certainly have the momentum in this third frame, although they have not been able to beat the goaltender Ryland Toth in this period despite throwing everything everything on the net of the Red Deer Rebels goaltender. 12-1 the shots for the pass in the third period. 12-1. Here's Zabrowski middle point. Shot blocked. Gets it back. Blocked again. And Evan Poli, the Wataskin product, rolls it all the way down the ice. Back to get it. Chase Harrison, who's been so good in these playoffs, he will whistle it into the Red Deer zone. Around the net it goes. Wagner can't pick it up in the corner. Phil turns and squeezes it off the wall off ice. Zabrowski back to get it on his own line. For Adam Brooks, who's got the Pats goal tonight. Up to Zabrowski, game center. Flushes it in. Detzel back in the corner. And rolls out front, and Fleury will pop it out. Hilson Dagger shooting it back in as the Pats get a change. Flurry on it behind the Red Deer net. We are inside the final half of the third period. 9.05 to go, 1-1. Debruskin can't chase it down in the corner of the Regina end. Hilson Dogger pokes it up the wall to the waiting Cole Sanford. He'll clear it out. Shot back in right on target by Flurry. Tyler Brown had trouble with it. But he zeroed in on it, hands it over to Colby Williams. He'll start the rush up ice. Stopped at the Red Deer line. Now it goes off the leg of Steele into the zone. Musil the long feed up to Haluka, and here come the Rebels. Haluka on the right wing side, stops in the corner. To the point, and the shot from Noje wide, and it hits something on its way to the goal, and Sam Steele is up the other way. And he stopped coming into the Red Deer end. Haluka the other way, has got Spachik. They're over the line. Haluka weaving to the right side. Cuts his way right down Mean Street, but can't shoot. Turns at the line and plays it down behind the cage for Spachek of the Rebels. Pat's running around a bit here. Bobic the shot blocked by LeCession, and it stung him. And now it's scooped out by Aaron Macklin, and it's in neutral ice. Poli can't receive the pass coming into the Regina zone. Battle for it, high slot. Riker Cole's away now. Riker Cole on the shoot in. He'll come off for a change. Macklin over skates it in the corner. It's played to the line. Zablocki shot into legs. Kicked in by Hobbs, but only momentarily. Bobby clears it out. 1 1 the score. Game seven. 7.20 to go. Here's the stretch pass up to DeWitt, and the Rebels are in. Jeff DeWitt fed it to the goal. Brown can't stop it. They score. They score. Adam Musil. And the Rebels lead. Musil driving hard to the net. The puck was sitting on a platter in the blue paint. Tyler Brown down and out. And Musil makes the Regina Pats pay as the Red Deer Rebels take a 2-1 lead. As we see, Tyler Brown was sitting at the side of his crease, lost track of the puck, and Musil, all he had to do was tap it in the Yannick cage. Probably one of the easiest goals of his Western Hockey League career. Tough one on Tyler Brown. And now the officials are talking with John Paddock. That has brought them out of their seats here in the NMAX Centrium. John Paddock wants some type of an explanation. And I'm not sure what for. I mean, the puck was, was free. Just one of those things. Maybe he was thinking a goaltender interference on his netminder, Tyler Brown, but the goal going to stand and the Rebels ahead by one. Musil's third. Here's the announcement. Jeff DeWitt, tie goal 12:46. Musil's third of the playoffs from Poli and DeWitt at 12:46. Well, 6:50 to go. 
Lane Zablocki stopped coming into the Red Deer zone. And here's Polachuk the other way. Grayson Polachuk out front for Felt. And it's knocked away by Connor Hobbs. And here's Colby Williams the other way. Right up the middle. Dishes it on the right to Zablocki. His shot's blocked. Goes off a skate in behind. Hayden Flurry there for Red Deer. Up the wing. And here it comes Spacha. One on three. Over the line he goes. Down the far right wing and blows a tire. Back up to his feet. It's dumped up the wing for Richards. Now into the middle of the ice. And away comes Sergei Zabrowski. Left side feed to Sean Richards. Burning in. Shot from there. Kicked out by Toll. Rebound right in front. Very reminiscent of the other end, but they swatted away in time. Harrison now a shot block. Down to the right-hand corner it goes. Steal for Sanford down low. He's tied up. Comes up the wing to Sam Steele again. He's tied up on the boards. 5.45 to go. Josh Mahura behind his goal. Uses the window to get it up the wing, but not out. Sanford down low. Richards out front. Sanford pounded it over the net. And in fact, out of play as the faceoff will come outside the Regina, sorry, the Red Deer line. And I think Brent Sutter has called a timeout. No, this is the media timeout here. As we take a second look here, Cole Sanford uh, looking to wire it home. And we get a, a stoppage here. And this could be, mean uh, good things for the Regina Pats as they'll get a little bit of a breather. And maybe John Paddock and his coaching staff able to draw something up as the Pats search for the equalizer in the late stages of this uh, third period and maybe the season for the Regina Pats. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. You just get the feeling they're not done yet, don't you, Braden? The way the pass have been buzzing. So tough on Tyler Brown to allow a goal such as that. And in no way, shape, or form are we fitting him for the Gold Horns. Just saying, a tough goal to give up if the, if the score doesn't change. But like I say, I don't think the pass are done. I know plenty of time for the Regina Pats to claw their way back into this one. The good news for them, they're only down by a goal, but they'll want to get something going here in short order. Maybe look for John Paddock to pull his goaltender with plenty of time left in this uh, contest as that seems to be one of the new strategies with coaches in all levels of hockey. All right, face off deep in the Red Deer zone. Sam Steele against Michael Spachik. All important draw. And the Rebels win it. Kale Detzel pokes it up the wall, and here's a break for DeWitt. But a great defensive effort by Connor Hobbs to swat it away. And it's just outside the Regina line. Steele sends it rink wide. It's in the skates of Hobbs. Turns, can't get it up ice. Just over five minutes to go. Detzel on the shoot in. Brown out of his goal, can't stop it. Hobbs in the right corner. Behind the net, Chase Harrison goes after it. Up the wing now, and here come the Pats. Sean Richards gliding into the middle of the ice. His backhand in is blocked. Now Zabrowski the long shoot in and Toth will set it up at the side of the goal for Detzel. Brooks, Wagner and Zablocki out there. The Pats top line. But it's the Rebels with the break. Polinchuk down the left side. He leaned into it and Brooks makes the save and holds on. And no rebound from the goaltender Tyler Brown as he does not need to let up a rebound this late in a hockey game as we've seen a number of goals throughout this series scored that way. So the NMAC Centrum now absolute pandemonium here in central Alberta as the Rebels ahead by one of the Pats looking to tie it up. Brooks wins the draw, but the Pats get stopped in transition and Chase Harrison goes back behind his net to start this breakout. His feed for Wagner's off the mark. But he'll now dump it in and Toth will leave it behind. 
time a factor, 409 to go. Long shot out. Debrus can't get it at center. Zabrowski throwing it in from neutral ice, and Detzel back behind that red deer net. Far corner for Spachik as the Rebels will be content to eat as much time as they can. Pats had a tag up here. Spachik gave it up. Lecician. Big man tied up on the wall by the European Spachik. He comes behind the red deer net. Detzel up the wing, and away comes Debrusque. He'll poke it in, and the Rebels will change. Three and a half to go. Pat's got to get urgent here. Connor Hobbs starting out right up the middle, flipping it in from center. And we'll keep our eye on Tyler Brown, but no notion that he's going to come to the bench anytime soon. Here's Steele down low to the line. Hilson Dagger pokes it well wide. Mahur in the corner. Up the wall for Evan Poli. He'll look up ice and carry it. And now dump it in, sending Connor Hobbs back to get it. First one on it, Noje. Poking it behind the net as the Rebels change again. Under three minutes to go. Sean Richards of Regina. Pass a little discombobulated here right now. Rebels back in, Paul and Chuck put it toward the goal and it slithers wide. Steele up to Wagner. He'll chip it in. Catches up to it. Plays it on the near right side for Colby Williams. Brown still on the net. Colby Williams sends it to the corner. Philp interrupts it there. Throws it up the wing to Paul and Chuck. First effort, can't get it out. Second effort, he does. Harrison on the pass blue line. Onwards to Wagner. 2.15 to go. Up for Sanford. They'll backhand it in. Brown's looking at the bench now. No point coming now as Brandon Hagel brings it through center and rolls it in. The big Russian, Zabrowski, onwards to Colby Williams, and they take the zone. From the left corner, he tried to center and hit escape. Hagel now sending it the other way. And it won't have enough mustard for an icing call. 1.40 to go. Adam Brooks, the Dubs' leading scorer, cruising in down the left side, plays it off the back of the net. Brown looking to the bench. Here he comes. Brandon Hagel off the boards to the line, held in by Harrison. And the free puck poked out. Hobbs, the lead feed, steered in by Brooks. Flurry, the hard shot from the side of his net. Held in right point by Harrison. Sanford, down low to Steele, and now they'll go to work. Steele for Sanford, and he pounded it wide. That might have been their chance. Left corner, Brooks, on the end wall to Lecession. Now for Steele in the office. Sam Steele for Hobbs, fired it wide. It comes out of the zone. 50 seconds left. Adam Brooks into steel gave it up Hobbs gets it left point knocks it near side but nobody's home and it's angled out by Paul and Chuck 30 seconds left comes towards the pass net Connor Hobbs back to get it Hobbs up for Cole Sanford fires it in 18 seconds to go flurry can't clear Williams smashes it down the wall and Sanford's on it. Behind, wrap around Steele. Can't get it on net. Five seconds. Hobbs stopped on the wall. Now it comes in front. Loose puck. Played off the back of the net. A scramble. Sanford. Time runs out. It's over. hold on and what turned out to be a wildly entertaining third period and finish and they will move on to the Western Hockey League's Eastern Conference Final against the Brandon Wheat Kings but still a lot of celebrating 
left here for the Rebels. Smiles all around, and at the other end, devastation, which we'll show you in a minute, and there it is. The clock strikes midnight for the Cinderella Pats here in Game 7 on a Tuesday night in Red Deer. And the season will go on for the Red Deer Rebels. They, of course, will host the 2016 MasterCard Memorial Cup, but they weren't interested in a lengthy hiatus, which would have come with a Game 7 loss here tonight. And that guy, Ryland Toth, coming up large in this third period, preserving the victory. And they move on. First time since 2000, the Regina Pats go to a game seven. And just like 2000, they fall. That was to the Saskatoon Blades in a first round series. And it takes 16 more years to get this far. And you can bet it hurts every bit as much. Jake DeBrusque embracing Sergei Zabrowski. DeBrusque was with the Swift Current Broncos last year who were swept by these Regina Pats in round one. DeBrusque getting a certain measure of revenge. DeBrusque hitting the score sheet tonight on Adam Malukas' second period goal to get things going for the Red Deer Rebels. And Jake DeBrusque will be heard from in the end. You know that. Father Louis watching our broadcast from Edmonton tonight. Got to be proud. Colby Williams career ending. You see him, the 20 year old Regina Pat. What a tough luck season he's had. But at least he came back for the playoffs and scored in his final home game on Sunday night. Cole Sanford, you see number 26 season coming to an end. And there's Colby, a five sport athlete who will look to prolong his career with the NHL's Washington Capitals organization. John Paddock, Dave Struish, and the coaches shaking hands. Jeff Truett, the top assistant coach of the Red Deer Rebels. Some say will be the next head coach of the Red Deer Rebels whenever Brent Sutter elects. He's had enough. But he's got the Brandon Wheat Kings next. Maybe a league final. And then the Memorial Cup as the Rebels salute this crowd. And man, oh man, do they have great fans here in Central Alberta right from day one going back to 1992. What a marquee franchise this is. And nobody heading to the exits, by the way, as they celebrate their Rebels in this game seven victory. Let's go down to ice level now. Braden Malsbury is with the winning goaltender. Here with uh, Ryland Toth of the Red Deer Rebels, you pick up the win here tonight. You're moving on to the Eastern Conference Final. Ryland, how good does that feel? Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting for sure. It was a heck of a series. I mean, I came in halfway through, and I, it feels like I played every game. Like, it's just, it was, it was a grind, and there was a war, and they battled hard right to the end, and it was a great series. And the Regina Pats, a lot of pressure in this contest in the late stages. How were you able to weather the storm? Um, you know, I uh, I just tried to stay patient and uh, take it one shot at a time. And the guys did a great job of blocking shots like they've done all series. And uh, yeah, it was a great game. And how did you feel about your game personally? You were out for a considerable amount of time and you find yourself uh, back in the mix in the second round versus the Regina Pats. Yeah, it was uh, it was tough being out for that long and uh, it's nice to be back. Uh, first first couple of games were a little rusty, but uh, I feel better now and uh, hopefully keep getting better. And what are you expecting from the Brandon Wheat Kings? I know this this series just ended versus Regina, but I'm sure you guys uh, will be re getting getting ready to go here quite soon. Yeah, yeah, they uh, they have a lot of offense definitely and uh, great D and uh, and they have a very good goalie and uh, I think we match up pretty well against them. We had four really good games throughout the year against them and uh, it's going to be a battle for sure and I'm excited. 
Ryland, we appreciate your time, and I'm sure lots of friends and family tuning in tonight uh, back in uh, Saskatoon. Yeah, I, uh, I hope so. I hope they're watching. So thanks for, thanks for having me. No problem. Best of luck as you head to the Eastern uh, Conference Final. Ryland Toth, our guest, and Rod, back up to you. All right, thank you so much, Braden Malsbury. And here's your winning goal, the backbreaker, the heartbreaker for the Regina Pats. Adam Musial popping home his third on a puck the Pats couldn't find. What a goal to win it on. What a goal to lose it on. And there you see Adam Musial getting his star award. So we'll leave you with that. The Red Deer Rebels move on season ends for the Regina Pats but they'll be heard from in the years ahead at this time of year for sure. Two on Rebels in game seven they'll face Brandon in the Eastern final. That concludes our broadcast from Red Deer for our producer Kevin Foot, our color commentator Braden Malsbury and our entire crew. This is Rod Peterson saying so long everybody from the NMAX Centrium in Red Deer.